you can talk about yourself and then talk about your business and then um, and then talk about some problems your business may be facing. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, how, how am I going to do all of that in just six minutes? So if you have a watch or your phone or any kind of time tracking device or if you're inventing that or anything, just go ahead and pause it just for a little bit and then we'll just uh, we'll go on about our morning. But in all seriousness, um, good morning. My name is Mindy Lord. I, I'm a senior here at Georgia Southern. I'm studying business, entrepreneurship, and writing. Um, I plan to graduate. Oh, I am graduating in May. Uh, I moved to Georgia Southern a little over three and a half years ago, sort of as a non-traditional student. I was 20 years old. I transferred in. And um, I really didn't have a, a, a lot of direction of what I was going to do here at Georgia Southern, but I came as, as, as a nutrition major, and then I sort of, you know, kind of tested out a few things and, and changed it from there. Um, after graduation, I planned to move back to my hometown of Dublin, Georgia. I was born and raised there, lived there my whole life. I uh, grew up in the country. My only neighbors were, was, you know, my grandparents, and so we had four-wheelers and dirt bikes and um, motorcycles and just all this stuff, grew up in hay fields and, and just trees, and we were always outside. And it wasn't until just, you know, a year or so ago when I started looking back on my childhood and I said, and I started thinking, you know, we, we were always creating and innovating as children and even as teenagers, but you don't realize it at the time that you're doing that. But just being outside and just coming up with new ways, and, and some people may call it being rednecks, but uh, we, just, we just came up with, you know, new stuff, old and common type stuff, and just, just found new ways to have fun. And, um, and then I, I didn't really realize at the time either, up until a few years ago, I've always been around entrepreneurship. My family's business is a meat processing and packaging company. Um, it is in Dexter, Georgia, which is a small little town outside of Dublin with no red light. And um, our products are all over the southeast and in Georgia and Alabama and all that stuff. And um, so I, I didn't realize at the time, but I was, you know, we've always been around entrepreneurship. And for a, a business to successfully um, be there with a town with just one red light, you know, just says a lot, and I've just always been around it. And um, so I guess you can say I'm a budding entrepreneur. And um, my business is Luella. It was formerly called Luella Designs. It's now Luella Floral and Farm. Floral is the floral design for custom weddings and events. And farm is a specialty cut flower farm growing flowers for profit. And so I, I didn't really plan this business out. I didn't really think about it a lot. I just, I just started it with a need, and it wasn't a profitable need, it wasn't an immediate need, but my, my mom needed a wreath, a door wreath for her front door for Christmas. So I went outside, and I started gathering these living materials, and I started forging berries and leaves, and I just created this design for her door, and, and I put it on my trophy case that a lot of people like to call Facebook and say, hey, look what I did, kind of thing, you know? So then I get messages saying, hey, are you selling these things? And then a few months later, I get messages saying, hey, are you doing weddings? And then, after that, a, a, month, a few months in, I call my, my grandmother after class and I say, Mima, I hope you saved the seeds from our flowers from last year because I've just applied and been accepted to be a vendor at the farmer's market in Dublin. And I heard a long pause and she's like, you're doing what? I said, you know those flowers we grew last year? Those zinnias and sunflowers? And we saved the seeds and we dried them out? Let's just go ahead and sell them this year on every Saturday. And she's like, Mindy, okay, you know. So I did that, and I did that last summer. And so then six months in, I'm like, okay, I have I've booked three weddings, and these are big weddings, and I've made over 100 actual grapevine wreaths, and I have sold my product at farmer's market for two months in a row every Saturday while being a full-time college student. I think I'm a, um, a business owner, so i got to get all my stuff figured out, right? Yes, yeah, so enter in Dr. Steve Stewart's entrepreneurship class over summer, and, um, and, and all this stuff started making sense. And the first day he presented all of these, these entrepreneurs and these people who, looking from the outside in or looking at the beginning, just seemed like failures. There was an ex-convict. There was a, a person who had many failed businesses. Um, and there were just all these people that if you're looking at it when they were very beginning, like, okay, they're failures. They're not worth anything. And then he goes and shows, kind of like, look at them now kind of thing and look at them being very successful business owners of several business owners, owners and entrepreneurs. And then it started to click. And on that very first day, I said, okay, I think this is what I'm supposed to do, you know? And, and so then I started finding out about a business model. And I, and I had no idea what it was before. 
and he, he encouraged me to develop my business model with my business. I, I vaguely mentioned it the first day that I was a farmer's market vendor, you know, you kind of do it on the sly when you have to say your, your things about you. And, um, but he encouraged me to do this business model and I started researching. And I started researching in the industry that I had no idea about. But it was an industry that I was currently doing business in, and that was the flower industry. And so as I began doing more research, I started to, to find out staggering results that a lot of us sitting in here right now don't know about. And I started to find that all, that majority of flowers sold in our country are imported from overseas. And, and so 80% of flowers that are, that are sold here in America are imported. They are dipping and treating these flowers with highly toxic pesticides and chemicals so they can last from transport to transport and they can last in a box for over two weeks so they can make it to a wholesale establishment so they can make it to a florist. And so you may think, okay, you know, that's, that's not that great. Um, but then I started, I started finding out that even after they get into the florist's hands, 40% of flowers are then thrown out as waste because florists cannot control their business for the next week. They can't say, I'm gonna order this number of lilies and then they have a customer call the next week and say, you know, hey, I want red roses to send to so-and-so. So there's, so not only is there an, a, an import issue, not only is there a pesticide and chemical issue, but there's also a waste issue. And so as I started thinking about what I'm really doing, everything that I did backwards started coming into play and making sense. And, start, and I started looking into domestic flower farms. And one of the reasons why domestic flower farms have, has not done as well is because of the trade and the tax regulations that were done back in the 70s and 80s. And so you say, okay, well, how are you really going to make this happen? And so how I've so far made this happen is that I've just started locally and I've started small. What I'd really like to do is um, I'd still like to have a presence at the farmer's market, but I'd like to focus more on wholesale purchases. So I'd have my bulk purchases go into wholesale establishments, and the florist can choose whether or not to purchase that product, but it would be purchased first from the wholesaler. Um, and so, you know, and with all of that being said, um, I do have a few issues that I would, that I would like to discuss today and um, about how, how, but you know, the questions I have from you, from the little information that you received from me today, and I hope that when we, when we do get to these questions, I can elaborate a little bit more on exactly, you know, what it is if, if you need more direction. But my first question is, is do I stick to my flower farm or, or do I stick to my flower business? And what that means is, if I have a flower farm, I just have an American grown product and I find my channels through that way, selling either wholesale, farmer's market, direct to florist, or direct to customers. If I have my, flor my flower business, I still have my flower farm and that's a portion of it. But my other business will be my weddings and events, which I currently do now, because, for example, if I, have, if I have a bride who comes in September and they say, hey, I would like a green hydrangea and I like a pink rose. Well, first of all, I can't grow that in September. Second of all, you can't find that domestically grown anywhere in America, so it has to be imported. So with that being said, if I do that, which I'm doing right now, how do I go about saying, how do I go about preaching the, the importance of an American grown product if I'm, if I'm not really doing that wholeheartedly? So that's my question. Flower farm, 100%, or flower farm a portion and my flower business? Because weddings, if you don't know, um, are a, a, big, a big revenue driver for me. So that's the first question, and I would appreciate any feedback if you have any. Yes. My question would be, of the two alternatives you just mentioned, which one has less competition? Which one has the greatest potential for profitability and growth, or is it both? And do you have the management capability to handle both if it's if, if the answer is both of them? Right. Um, so the competition thing is, is kind of hard to narrowly focus in on because I'm not really competing with with um, with grocery stores because they're always going to have the ten dollar bouquet that's cheaply made that's gotten here fast, that can be grown all year round. But I'm, I'm more kind of having like a shift in education with the consumer saying, this is what we should be purchasing, whether it's flowers, coffee, food, or whatever. So as far as my competition, um, 
a flower farm there, I mean, the, the domestic flower farms are increasing as, as we get more towards this farm to table type movement and consumers are just being aware of, of what they're buying is where it's coming from, you know? Um, so, uh, I just, I don't, as far as like putting a farm and then weddings and weighing them, I just, I'm not really sure um, which one's more competitive because I'd say that they're, they're pretty much, they're both competitive. We're not only competing with the overseas flower factories, we're, we're competing with um, American grown stuff here too as a business. So. If you're saying you have to educate the consumer, how many years would that take before you have a business that people is accepting as, oh, I should be doing this? Right. Um, I think it would take at least two to three years to get them up, to, to make them aware of, of what we're doing and um, where we're growing at and, and what value it'll, it'll give to the consumer. So does that answer your question? Yes. What's the answer? The flower business. Bob Claxton, Heritage Video. Uh, my question would be, is, is which do you have a greater passion for? Is, is there one that you thoroughly enjoy and it gives you that excitement about? Because honestly, you can make a business probably either way, but if you really love doing weddings, then I would go that direction. If, if it's a little bit more of a person than the other, I would think that's the better choice. Well, so far, while this business has been working for me, is because I love both. I love being out in the country. I love manual labor, and I love just seeing uh, the, the fruit of my labor. And um, it's just really rewarding. And I say that now because I'm on a really small scale. But if I, if I have this huge farm one day, I'm like, I'm so exhausted. You know, I may say it's a little different. But but I love growing flowers, and I love being out there. And I and I and what I would love even more is to provide more opportunities for the community whether it's agritourism or whether it's just educational opportunities. Um, I will sp I'm will speaking to a, um, to an education group from my hometown over the summer. And so I, I like I like the whole agriculture thing. I have a passion for it. I'm a country girl, and, and that's just what I like, and that's what keeps me going. Um, I find purpose in that. As far as the design, that that's probably my biggest passion, though. Um, I like designing flowers I grow, but I also like designing flowers for weddings and events. So, you know, um, if, if we were if we were doing it on a, on a scale, number one passion is design, and then number two would be my flower farming. With the farm, so the design kind of came from the farm, though, right? If you have everybody to make sure to introduce yourself, so I ask a question. Suzanne, <coughs> um, so yeah, the, the farm itself is what you started with, the design kind of was born out of that. No? It was designed first my wreaths and then and my weddings and then the flowers at the farmer's market. Do you get much pushback from the brides if you talk to them about local farmers and sales? Mm -hmm. Well, um, since most of my brides were out of my, my farming season, I couldn't really say, hey, I have these colors and I'd like to provide this alternative for you. Um, so you know, I, I really haven't gotten to that point where I can offer that alternative for them. Um, but just from my experience and just and having the, the brides come in and just tell me exactly what they want and thanks to Pinterest and all of those, all those wonderful things, they pretty much have a, a set thing of what they want and, and you know, if, so that's my, my biggest concern is, well, even if I say, okay, I'm not going to offer, I'm not going to be able to get those flowers for you, but I have these, it's just, it's a, it's a big risk for me to take because they can easily say no and walk out the door, and then I lose that business. So, I haven't got to that point where I can provide that alternative. But I hope to, that's my plan. Even, if, you know, I, I hope to say, hey, I have this color that looks similar, or it's a similar texture, or it's a similar shape, and I'd like to provide this too. And it's, it's at a cheaper price, it's a better product, because it's grown here on my land, and it just has a story. Yeah. So. That's a good education. Okay. To, to the bride, you would yeah. say? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Paul Johnson, Kingdom Cuts. Um, do you have anyone that shares this passion with you, that 
share your gift with you, um, to share your vision as far as reproducing yourself. That what you you want to do is, is it can be done, but you're gonna have to reproduce yourself. You're gonna have to have. You can do the um, farm domestic grown um, agricultural thing. We have people come in, educate them, all of that, and you can still do your wedding as far as the design and, and doing the wedding plan and all those different things. But you're gonna need somebody else that see what you see um, because you're not gonna be able to do all of that yourself. Um, do you have anybody like that, that uh, has a passion like you have, that has a gift that you have, that, that you can kind of raise up? Right. So, you, so you're saying like an employee, a potential employee or a yes. potential partner? Yes. Because you can do, you can do them both. You can do them both. Um, uh, but you're going to have to have somebody that sees what you see. Right. Because right. you can't do it all yourself. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? At the time, I don't. Um, I'm a full-time student, so I only work. I, it's just me. So, for example, um, I have three events this weekend. Um, for my big wedding that I had, I'm having, I had to hire someone to help me out. And so she's not necessarily sharing the passion with me. She's just, just helping mm -hmm. me out, even though she's been into the floral business and all this thing. Um, but at the time, though, I don't have any employees or a potential partner that says, hey, you know, I kind of want to do this thing with you. Um, I've had several people ask me questions about their own growing mm -hmm. stuff and their own things, but um, at the time, no. But I see where you're coming from, and I would love that, especially, uh, to, especially to take a little bit of a pressure off me so I can really focus on my core value of my business, and then we'll have all of the tasks being done every, on a daily basis. So, yes, I would love to have that. Let me ask you about some money. <laughs> Another question. After... Um Graduating I do. That gives you more time. What are your plans after graduating? Okay, well, May is the peak of my season. So I've already started on the weekends. I have spring break next week to plant all of my seeds on my family's land. So in May, I will just full force go with my flower farming. And then I have several events booked for this summer. I have events booked all the way up until <clears throat> October of this year. And then I have two 2017 events already booked. And that's all of my, my weddings and events, which are, are pretty big events, you know. And um, so it's really hard for me to kind of shy away from those things. But my plans are, what, as soon as I move to May, just to, to get all of my equipment together and just to really be ready to, for my harvest season. And then I'll start going to, um, to, to the farmer's market. And then I'll start going to local florists, door to door, seeing if they like to, to purchase my product on a weekly basis. So you can create the revenue to be able to hire some more. Right. Right. Okay. Right. That's <laughs> Got a couple of directions here. First, my uh, first question is: Are there any uh, Fred David Minuteman Press? Sorry. Are there any other uh, flower farms in the area? Um, the closest flower farm there is is one that just recently started last year, Wilmore Farms in Metter. And then there's Three Porch Farm in Athens, Georgia, and they are close enough to Atlanta where they're able to, to sell to several different markets there. So Athens, Metter, um, and that's the, the ones that I'm familiar with. Okay, the reason I said it's kind of several directions I'm, I'm thinking I wanted to present to you. Because your design business, your wedding business is obviously your bread and butter. It seems to be, it keeps you busy. You've got a full schedule for over a year, which way your income's coming in. Right. Uh, the flower farm, you, you know, you don't know, I mean, you're going to grow, but you still don't know, really know where you're going to sell all your product to yet. So my thought is if you partnered either with, in your farm that you have, go to one of these farms and say, I'm opening, I want to partner with a farm in the Dublin area, would you be interested in being involved with me? Because they've already got a market. They're, they've already had their marketing, they're already educating. So you don't have to educate and market. You don't have to spend your time going door to door the floor selling. They've already got that infrastructure in place, but you can partner in some way, a joint venture, uh, a farm locally, or maybe they can provide you, depending upon their resources. That may be an avenue that allows you to concentrate on your wedding business but it still allows you to have your hand in the, in, in the farming that possibly down the road is your, your business, your wedding business can take off and support itself on its own. You have maybe one or two people helping you. 
you just start concentrating here because you're going to find your hardest issue and I think everybody who's an entrepreneur will agree with this, you get spread out so thin that you end up doing nothing really well because you're trying to do so many different things. Right. right. Uh, and that's what you want to be careful not to do. Uh, but you want to always be sure you got whatever you focus on first is where your income is coming in that will allow you that, I don't, I don't want to use, I hate to use the phrase hobby business, but that back business that you really have a passion for, but it's not going to pay the bills. It's not going to support, it's going to take more, more in that's going to come out in, for a long period of time. So I'd ask you to kind of think about those things and maybe talk to these other people. And see what, because you never know, you you sit down in front of them and see, or maybe even a third party, somebody that, you said some people have talked to you about how you're doing it and all. Maybe some of those people are interested. Your expertise, your background, maybe they've got the blood, sweat, and tears. You've got the, the expertise on the other end. Y'all can be a part of that one, too. That's another thing to think about. Yeah, I appreciate your feedback. Um, that's, that is a big thing to think about. And um, I, would, I would consider, I know that um, last summer, um, like my first experience at the farmer's market, I had actually talked to some vegetable farmers for growing flowers for me. And, and it was kind of on a contract basis. Um, so, yeah, that's, it's just a lot of options to weigh. Um, but I like, I, like, I like that idea. Thank you for your feedback. Sure. As a follow-up, it is a good suggestion. Is there any southeastern area, not not Metter Athens, but any southeastern larger companies that you know of? Not flower farms, no. Mm -hmm. um, Jerry Blake with Novel Energy. Uh, as far as, like, for your growth and all, you go with that. I think you got a key uh, ally is in your father's uh, your family packaging plan. Refrigerated trucks, I imagine, going every different way. Because you mentioned people in Athens, I think, you know, have that Atlanta network they're close to. Well, you can actually, I mean, you're going to definitely need a salesperson all, but if you want to, you can actually plan your growth and talk to your family about using them for distributing, you know, his you know, make a deal with that and concentrate on those areas too. So you're not really spreading yourself so out there just with no, well, how am I going to get it there? But you concentrate on those areas they're going to also and use that as a little direction. Right, know? yeah. And um, so I guess I should have kind of related it a little better of why I have to talk about my family's business. You know, like, why is she telling us about her, her family sausage business? Um, but, but that's kind of where I was getting at is that I have the resources available to me. And... Um, uh, not only on an equipment and transportation scale, but also in, in land. So, so my main cost drivers are are kind of already cut out, and I've already had that figured out. So that's kind of propelling me a little bit more. It's giving me a little step ahead because I have those available to me. And um, so I've already been in discussion, you know, about refrigerated trucks and all of that stuff. And I would like to, if, if the flower farm goes well, I'd like to, and I'm able to as well, expand from Atlanta to Savannah because Dublin's in the heart of it. And, um, and that would be amazing. Yeah. Uh, Sally with BrewToTakeOut.com. Talking about, um, it's like, I think this is what Suzanne was talking about, couldn't hear the whole thing, but um, when you're talking to your wedding people mm -hmm. about the flower options and they're, they're wanting this, but you have this, mm -hmm. offer, offer what they want, but this is going to be this amount, but you're also, this is another option, educating them on the reason you're wanting them to go with this package because this is available and it's not going to cost as much as a cost factor. Mm -hmm. Or they can pay, you know, $1,000 for this or you can do 500 for this. And if you give them, and also you're educating them. Yes, too. and that's my dream. That's my dream is to be able to have that opportunity to say, hey, this is a safer alternative, it's socially conscious, it's good for you, it's good for the soul, it's good for the land, and it's beautiful. But, and then you have this, let's kind of compare it and I can offer this at a, at a better price. And uh, that's my dream. That's my to be able to have that option of of, of a bride who's going to bring me in a higher profit, but to have my alternative over here on the side and on the, at the back door or wherever you know in the fields and say, you know, it, the choice is yours, but it's here. Right. So right. that's my that's my dream, and that's what I'm that's what I'm hoping to go for. So and and I will say to end even even as I'm getting more brides. I'm trying to, and, it's, I, and I, I will say, I have a lot of brides who say, I want these colors and I want this look, 
but you can do and use whatever types. And so I say, okay. And so I am actually supporting other farms who are already they already have a season because of the different climate, and and, and introducing and kind of indirectly introducing to um, to the brides, but also to people who see see my advertisements um, for the different varieties of flowers that I'll actually grow because we won't be growing what they call commodity flowers, such as roses and carnations. We'll be growing more specialty cut flowers and flowers that you won't see everywhere in grocery stores. And those are gonna be your homegrown varieties and, and newer varieties. And so, and it's a different look. When you look at them, you really can tell the difference. And so, and so that's what I've been trying to do is just support other farms while I'm trying to get mine going and saying, hey, look at these ranunculus I use in this bouquet. I'm growing them next year. And I'm already, I'm growing them right now, but really tiny um, scale. So, so that's, that's kind of like my, my, my vision right now is just to support the other farms, introduce them into the varieties, and then next year I could say, I grew, I have those already grown. Very thank cool. you for the